Hi everyone, I'm Sarah St. Ruth, a product manager here at Esri UK. Today, I'm going to be taking you through how you can begin building your own web editing applications using the suite for ArcGIS Builder. So in this session, we're going to take a look at what is suite for ArcGIS. We're not going to spend too much time on this topic as this is a focus of another one of these sessions. Really, what we're going to concentrate on is how do you begin building your own web editing application. So we're going to start with the basics and then we're going to look at how we can use more advanced functionality to help bring analysis into the decision making process whilst you're editing. Finally, we're just going to spend a few minutes looking at what we've covered today. So what is Suite for ArcGIS? Well, it's a web editing application for the ArcGIS platform. We have lots of different apps available. You might be using ArcGIS Pro at the moment, or you might be using Story Maps or ArcGIS Hub. These are all applications available as part of the ArcGIS platform, and each one of them has a specific use. The suite is no different. It's another app available on the ArcGIS platform. This app is focused on allowing you to edit your GIS data in the web. So it's a lightweight application. We've designed it to be easy to use, but it's really rich in functionality. Suite protects your data. And what we mean by that is that it will run rules every single time a user creates data or edits it. So every single click, a rule set is run to make sure that data is valid. Because of these rules, no invalid data can be added. This means you no longer have to go through a lengthy QA process before you can use the data in further analysis or reporting. And that's what we're going to spend time looking at today is how do you offer these rules for your business workflow? By combining a lightweight user interface and by protecting your data through the rule set, you can make these editing applications available to any stakeholder. So this could be colleagues in your organization who don't necessarily have a background in GIS or it could be members of the public. Because the user interface is intuitive and lightweight and data is being protected through the rule set that you define in the builder, you can make this application available to colleagues, to members of the public, and know that the data that they edit is going to be valid for further reporting and analysis immediately. So that's our whirlwind of what Suite is. Let's get started. So this is the app that we're going to be building today. It's designed for a non-GIS audience and it allows a user to create a new development site. This new development site will not be able to overlap any other existing development site. Any planned homes will need to be within the development site. And planned homes themselves won't be able to overlap. Once we've constructed our site, we'll also be able to see information that's been automatically generated for us. So here we can see the size of the site, the capacity for new homes, the number of schools required, and how many planned homes are on this. So if I redo this, you can see planned homes has now been populated. Okay, the other thing that we'll be configuring is this idea of giving users information as they're editing. So as I begin to create a new development site, I'll be told if I'm intersecting with a triple SI layer. This triple SI layer is being served directly from Natural England. So let's get started building our app. This is the suite for ArcGIS Builder and the page we're looking at right now is the home page. So this contains all the apps that I've configured, but it's also the place I would go to if I want to create new applications. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new app. There's two options to create a new app, but for today's session, we're just going to concentrate on create using Builder. So this is a sweet builder. So for a quick tour, the first thing you can see is the wireframe. This emulates the end user application. And the idea behind this is you would go to each of these individual sections like you would find them in the client app and that's where you configure the functionality. At the top, we've got the ability to launch the application and we also have this preview option which we'll use as part of building the app. Okay, so let's get started. 
First thing to do is we need to add a web map. So I can choose to search my content by organization or publicly available web maps. So I've got a web map set up here and I've got two feature services within this web map. So what does it look like when you've only added a web map? As you can see, it looks like the application we saw at the beginning. I can choose a feature to create, so either a development site or a home. I can see the layers in the app. I've also got these advanced tools already enabled if I need them. So right now, this is just a plain editor. There's no rules to stipulate how this data should be created, uh, but I could go ahead and create data without having to add any rules at all. So let's set up some rules. Rules typically manifest in the map. So you can see we just go to the map and hit rules. And there are lots of different options under here, but we're only concentrating in today's demonstration on topology. And topology are what govern the spatial rules around this feature. So what makes it a valid or an invalid shape? So we've got a few options here. So for planned homes, I don't want to allow holes. I'm gonna make sure that they're only single part and I'm not gonna allow homes to overlap one another. For the development site, I'm also going to prevent them from being holes. I'm going to allow them to be multi-part. So this would allow me to digitize part of the site across a road, for example. And I'm not going to allow them to overlap. So that's great. So I've set up some single layer topology rules. This will only apply to features in development site. And these rules will only apply to features in planned homes. Now I actually want to set up some topology rules between the layers. So we can see we've got a number of options here. The rule that I want to set up is that homes will always be within development sites. So this is the contained rule. The parent containing layer is the development site. And then I just tick planned homes. And that's it. There are topology rules for this application. So let's take a look at what they look like. So I'm going to go to preview. And the first thing that I'm going to create is a planned home. And it's because we want to test, can you create planned homes without creating development sites? There we go. It prevented us from creating it. It actually flashed up orange at the bottom to give us a message about what had happened. And we've also got this message in our messages panel. So now I'm going to create a development site. And now I'm going to create a planned home and see what happens. Great. So that was valid. What happens if I try to create it over a boundary? You'll see that Suite is automatically handling that for us. It's making sure that only the part which falls within the development site is allowed to persist. And let's just, for a final check, just make sure two development sites can't overlap but they can be multi-part. So let's create another part over here. Fantastic. So you can see that these are both the same feature, but they're in two separate locations. So I'm happy with those rules. I'm actually going to undo all of this because we don't need this right now. The next thing we want to take a look at is setting attribute rules. So in suite, we call attributes properties. First of all, we're going to have a look at the development site. I've got a lot of values that I probably don't want an end user to see. I want to keep this application as simple as possible. So in display, I can choose whether or not to hide these fields. So I'm happy with the fields that I've hidden. I'm now going to set some values that can be automatically calculated when the feature is created or edited. So the first one I'm going to set is the size of the site. So now you can see I've actually got more options on these fields. I'm going to go to calculation. I'm going to determine using a script and the language that are used for attribute calculations is Arcade. So if you've used this in ArcGIS Online or you may be using it in ArcGIS Pro, it is the same language, but with some extra functions that can be used in Suite. So for this, I want to return back the size of the site in square meters. I'm going to go to examples. 
and I can see that there's one called calculate area in hectares. I know this function will return back lots of decimal and that's not required for this application. So I'm going to apply a function called round and I'm going to make this to two decimal. But this isn't quite right. This is going to return it back in hectares. So I'm just going to change this to square meters. I'm going to check if this is valid. It's absolutely fine. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to take a look at the properties. First thing you'll notice, all the fields that I said should be hidden are hidden. And now I've got the size of the site in square meters. So the next field we're going to look at is capacity. And here's a script I prepared a little earlier. This is taking the size of the site. It's removing 20% of that total to account for pavement and for road. It's then dividing it by 75. So this is the average house size that we're going to put on our site, 75 square meters. And we're going to round it to zero so we get a full number. And then we're just returning this variable number of homes. Let's create a new site. So what we can see is we've got the size of the site and the capacity for new homes. And that's automatically being calculated. If I was to reshape this, make it bigger, you can see that both of these values are changing automatically. The next attribute calculation is going to be different from the other two. In this calculation, we're going to take a look at the planned homes layer. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the planned homes layer and we're seeing what intersects with our development and we're counting how many times those planned homes intersect. So I'm going to choose planned homes and I'm just going to draw some rough ones here. I'm going to select our development and what you can see here is we've now got two planned homes. If I was to create another one, we've now got three. The next field we're going to take a look at is number of schools. So again, determining using a script. This time I'm going to use an if statement. This is looking at the capacity. And if it's below 2,000, there are no schools required. Between 2,000 and 6,001, between 6,000 and 10,002. Um, and if it isn't a value which is in those, we're returning at zero. The other thing I want to do is actually hide the display. So I'm going to determine this using a script. So the script is an if function and it's looking at the number of schools and if it's equal to zero, it's going to return true, which means it will be hidden. But if a value is not zero, then it will turn false and it will show that field. So here you can see we've got the number of schools. If I create a tiny site here, You'll see the capacity is of new homes is 37, but we can't see the number of schools required. So one of the last things we're going to do in this application is configure some visual feedback on the map. So to do this, it's we're again going back to the map because that's where it manifests in the app. And we've got this map feedback option. We're going to do layer feedback. I'm going to call this triple SI. And then I'm going to put a script in here. So I've created a variable called triple SI, and this is pointed at the triple SI layer that's in the living atlas. So here I'm looking at which triple SIs intersect the feature that I'm drawing at the time. If there is a triple SI layer that intersects, I'm adding a field, I've called it warning, and it's populated with don't build here triple SI. I'm going to have a look at development sites. I'm going to have the labeling field, which is going to be warning. I'm just going to set the renderer so 
So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to create a new development site. And here I've intersected with a triple SI layer that's coming from Natural England. This is the live layer that Natural England own. But I'm able to use this in this dynamic feedback and return back a message. This is really important. As I'm getting this visual feedback, I can make the decision on whether or not I am going to build here. It might be that I'm not going to get planning permission. So therefore, I can make a decision without having to go through any further analysis. So that's all we have time for today. Hopefully, you're coming away with a sense of what Suite for ArcGIS is. Easy to use web editor for the ArcGIS platform. You can protect your data for your business rules, some of which you've seen being set up today. And these applications can be given to any stakeholder. And they can access these through tablets um, or using their desktop machines. Within 15 minutes, we managed to build an application which has topology rules between each feature, but also between layers. We put in some attribute calculations, number of schools field, which is hiding based on the input of another field. And we've also got dynamic feedback that helps inform decision making. So it makes it that we can automatically see whether or not our development site would comply and whether or not we would be able to get planning permission. If you are interested in learning more about Suite, we have another video as part of this box set. And we also have lots of resources that you can check out as well. Thanks very much.